And there they go with this steam pack look. At one of my shows a few days ago, a child asked me how I pulled candy out of my hat. As a joke, I told the kid that the hat has a built-in wish-granting machine. Next thing I know, today a whole bunch of kids were pestering me to pull all sorts of things out of the hat. So I told them another white lie. The machine needs time to power up, but in the meantime you can write your wishes down. Well, they took me up on that offer. Enthusiastically. As I write this, I've only just got back from running around all over town, buying the things they wanted. Boy, are my legs sore. I wound up saving very little this month. But that's not a major issue. I now have a bigger problem. How am I going to hide all these things inside my hat? Two children came to talk to me after today's show. I don't know why they were out on their own. They looked much too young to be unsupervised. I do hope they got home safely. Anyway, they said that they wanted me to teach them how to do magic. It's not uncommon for children to ask this, of course, but I've never seen any of them as serious about it as these two. I told them that learning magic is very hard work. But that didn't faze them at all. It's like they already knew. They seemed so committed. I couldn't turn them down. It seems like something's bothering Lorenzo lately, but he won't open up to me about it. Surely he's not upset that I agreed to teach those two children. I'll have to talk him around. I have a good feeling about those kids. They're naturally talented, and it seems like they're not new to the world of magic. They have all sorts of fantastic ideas. All I'm really doing is helping them develop a more professional standard training plan. Why do I feel those are Lynette and you? I gotta call them the Lee siblings. They wanted to call me Master, but I told them they absolutely mustn't. Any magician worth their salt could have taught them what I have. They're the geniuses here. Compared to them, I don't deserve to be called any sort of master. With time, I have no doubt that they could become far greater magicians than I. My only concern is why they're so mature for their age. I fear they've had to grow up too fast. I don't dare to imagine what they must have been through. Gemma thinks so too. She doesn't like being around them. Says that their eyes are too piercing. They don't bother me, but then again, I've never been the sharpest tool in the shed. It's nearly time for me to go on tour. I asked the two kids if they'd like to come with me, but they shook their heads. I once overheard them talking about their father and their mission. Sounds like their parents have other plans for them. I guess we'll be parting ways soon. I knew it. It's only been ten days since I first met them, but I think that I've gotten a feel for their personalities now. They're very tough, but also very cautious. And they trust no one but each other. This, I fear is not a good habit to have. They hide things from me too. For example, when I asked them where they live and why they wanted to learn magic, they lied. 
That's the thing about children. Whenever they're trying to cover something up, it always shows somehow. I can sense that their lives have been hard, possibly even dangerous, too. They're not like other children. It's a shame that I can't do more to help them. After thinking things over, I decided to tell them a bit about how I see the world. It's full of lies and falsehoods, and that is why we must find our own truth. P.S. I hope they won't find my nagging annoying. Children are so opinionated nowadays. Will it do them more harm than good for someone they've only known ten days to lecture them like that? P.P.S. Maybe I'm overthinking this. Children aren't interested in grand philosophies. It probably just went in one ear and out the other. I bet they've already forgotten every word I said. Oh, Caesar, Caesar. Just mind your own business next time. Hey, this is how people are hiding their dice, really? Two magic geniuses with a father and a mission, huh? Sounds a lot like he was writing about Linny and Lynette, don't you think? <gasps> so did they meet Caesar when they were kids? Let's go ask Linny! <laughs> Linny! Shh, hold that thought. As I expected, there's a lot of fishy things going on in this place. Fishy? Uh-oh, what have you found? All in good time. Before we go over our new leads, I want to tell you how a high-altitude escape is performed. First, the magician slots themselves into a magic box in full view of the audience. The box is then suspended high in the air, and a short while later, the base automatically opens. At this point, a dummy will fall out of the box, but it looks real enough to grab the audience's attention, and they start wailing and screaming. Meanwhile, the real magician, who has by now blended into the crowd, waits for a good moment to make their appearance and put on a hysterical performance. Oh no! Is that me? Did I just fall to my death? Very vivid description. Paimon can really picture it. And then what? The audience's gaze then turns to the magician, and by the time they realize what's happened, the dummy has vanished. As if everything that just happened was some sort of shared illusion. Of course, that's just how I think the process should work, theoretically speaking. The inventor of this trick never performed it successfully. When the box opened, Caesar was the one who fell out, and not the dummy. He fell right to the ground from the highest point of the Opera House. <sighs> no one could hope to survive that fall. Not without a vision, at least. I don't think that helps even with the vision. no one else has ever vision. attempted this trick since. My understanding of how it works is just based on what I could gather from his notes and the relevant gadgets here in his workshop. So Caesar's famous high-altitude escape has never been done, huh? Paimon was about to say how cool it would have been to see it in person, but if it's that dangerous, it's probably for the best that no one else tries to do it. Wait a second. So if a dummy's supposed to drop out of the box, then where does the real magician go? How does he get out? Glad you asked. That brings us to the secret of said box. This box right here is the one that Caesar constructed himself to use in the performance, and it's not as simple as it looks. 
inside, there's a device that only the magician himself would know about. Once the magician's inside and the box is lifted up into the air, the audience's view of the box is fixed at a certain angle. From where they're standing, they have a clear view of the front, sides, and bottom, but the back and the top are now no longer visible. At this point, the magician presses a button inside the box, opening a secret door out of view. He then escapes through this trap door onto the Opera House roof, waits for the dummy to fall and distract the audience, and quietly returns to ground level. That's way simpler than Paimon imagined. Even Paimon could probably do it. <laughs> well, there's a little more to it than that, of course. The hardest part of this trick is controlling the audience's mood and reactions. That takes an exceptional degree of showmanship. There's the falling dummy, the miraculous reappearance, the pompous performing. Maybe the magician would even have themselves tied up before it begins to strengthen the impression that there's no escape. Many days and nights of careful research and painstaking practice would have gone into this, all culminating in a performance just a few minutes long, but one that still manages to transform the shock and grief of a tragic accident to the joy and laughter of a mesmerizing magic trick. Caesar was a highly accomplished magician, but unfortunately, even he didn't manage to pull it off. So, how did it go so wrong? You said you found some fishy stuff here. Have you figured out what really happened? I can make a pretty good guess. I looked into the case files. The magic box Caesar was using at the time of his death had the secret button I mentioned positioned on the right-hand side. And, sure enough, he always used his right hand as his dominant hand in public. Okay. Nothing suspicious there. But here's the strange thing. Most of the devices in this workshop have the mechanism on the left-hand side, including this box right here. Which leads me to believe that Caesar was in fact left-handed. Because a magician can't afford to have their most basic habits stand out too much. People naturally focus their attention on the most important details of the task or situation at hand. But, a magician needs to be able to redirect an audience's attention at will, so as to avoid arousing their suspicion. The essence of magic is getting people to believe a lie. If even the truth raises eyebrows, the falsehoods become all the more difficult to mask. And so, Caesar trained himself to use his right hand to align with his audience's expectations. Great magic always requires sacrifices. But in his most stressful and nerve-wracking moments, and when no one was watching, Reflex would kick in and he'd use his left hand. That's why he set his gadgets with the mechanism on his left. Exactly. I think that's likely what happened. Caesar would have been under a lot of time pressure during the escape. He'd have had mere seconds to open the hidden compartment, retrieve the dummy, then open the secret door and make a swift escape. But I'm sure he was confident. He would have rehearsed countless times to the point where it was second nature. He'd barely need to think about what he was doing because muscle memory would guide him through. So he opened the compartment, took out the dummy, checked everything was in order, and then went to leave. With his left hand, he reached for the button and suddenly, his heart skipped a beat. It wasn't there. Much like when you reach for your keys but find your pocket empty, his mind needed a moment to process what was going on. Instinctively, his left hand would keep feeling around for the missing button, maybe for another second or two, until the bottom of the box gave way. With the stakes being as high as they were, just a two second delay cost him everything. The authorities would find nothing suspicious and conclude that his death was due to his own error. But in reality, someone switched the boxes! And they did it to murder him! But how would they be able to make the switch without being noticed? That would be difficult to pull off, no? It would have to have been someone who knew that he was left-handed, and who could move his props around without arousing suspicion. Someone who was always by his side. Isn't that right, Lorenzo? 
You just couldn't let sleeping dogs lie, could you? There's not a lot of people who'd go to all this trouble for some magician who died ten years ago. I didn't want to have to do this, you know. Silencing you the hard way just creates more problems for me to deal with. But I gave you your chance. I hoped you'd do what's good for you and back off like the lady, but... You disappoint me. You mean Gemma? So you are the one who's been threatening her! Yes, although however stubborn she might be, she was never much of a liability. But you people... You never even knew him, but for some reason you just wouldn't drop it. Which is why you can't leave this place alive. Take them out and make it quick. <laughs> Do your worst! Everyone's Where did that come from? Teamwork is dreamwork! Now disappear! Shia. Did she knock up Nakawi Takan? Oh, you kids are tougher than you look. Had enough yet, Lorenzo? Your cronies can't help you now. I think it's high time you started talking. And what I'd really like to know is why did you murder Caesar? Oh, if I had a mora for every time you've said that man's name. Of course you idolized Caesar, everyone else did. But I was the real genius magician. Me! He was just an amateur who did cheap tricks for gullible children. I was the one who made magic into the fine art it is today. The aristocrats doffed their hats to me! So it was jealousy. <laughs> jealousy. Hatred, more like. I hated Caesar. All he cared about was his magic. He lived and breathed it. He poured everything into his street performances and his stupid tours like it was just a hobby to him. Never bothering to think about Mora. What sort of fool devotes their life to the art of deception and never has a Mora to show for it? But the people loved him, didn't they? Oh, how they looked up to him. No one gave me a second look. All I ever heard was, Oh, your master's amazing, isn't he? Amazing? Yeah, so amazing that he was completely broke. Every other apprentice was living it up at their master's expense, but no, not me. I put in all the work, mastered all the skills, and it brought me nothing more than the life I already had. He forbade me from using magic to trick people out of their mora. There was nothing he hated more than that. And with his reputation in Fontaine, it was too risky for me to go it alone. As long as he was alive, if I dabbled in my own brand of money-making magic, he would expose me, and it would destroy me. I had to kill him. There was no other way. He had to go. Hmm. And this was your only motive? It was reason enough. What other motive would I need? Jealousy. Well, I was under the impression that there might have been other factors at play. For instance, maybe you were in love with Gemma, but she was engaged to Caesar. In love with Gemma? D don't be ridiculous. Guess I was wrong about that then. <laughs> Next question. Are you the Phantom Weasel? I am. Caesar was so strict with me. He insisted that his way was the right way. 
that the sole purpose of magic was to bring joy to the world. I never bought into any of that. I was more interested in the practical value of magic. Sure enough, it helped me fill my pockets with all kinds of valuable treasures. You know, all this could be a way if you didn't challenge... Actually, why did you challenge Lina... Lina? Oh yeah! Charlotte told us that the weasel would steal whatever people valued, no matter how much he was worth! That's just how it looked from the outside. What would any thief want with second-rate loot? I've only ever targeted high-value items. I stole cheap things as a way of practicing my craft. It was other people's overactive imaginations that conjured up the preposterous image they then dubbed the Phantom Weasel. So, that's the story, huh? Well, I hope you're ready to tell it all over again during your trial. What choice do I have? You're a pack of wolves and you've got me between your jaws. You've seen what's here and my last ditch effort to stop it getting out has failed. What else can I do? So be it. I've enjoyed power and wealth for the last ten years. The likes of which Caesar could never give me. I wouldn't choose for things to end this way. But I regret nothing. Oh no, he has Very something. Well. In that case, I'll contact the guards. Traveler, Paimon, keep an eye on Lorenzo for me. I'll meet you just outside the workshop when I'm back. Okay, why do you have... Don't tell me, you put a bomb here, aren't you? I don't know why, but I can't stand what's gonna happen next. At least I can finally stop looking over my shoulder now. 